Good morning fellow privateers. Welcome to the week ahead video from Privateer FX. Let's get right down to it. Um, news flows fairly quiet over the weekend. Stocks open up a little bit lower than Friday's close. You know, we've had a big a big rally <clears throat> and you know we're getting into an area now where I think that uh, we're going to be looking to fade the recent strength, and uh, I think there'll be a, you know, a tradable retracement. So let's highlight um, some of these levels. I've got the weekly. This is the cash SPX because I want to I want to show you guys a gap um, that we think we'll probably get filled this week. It's kind of hard to see it. But this candle here, so we closed here at 29.74, and then we gapped open lower. This was, you know, in March when the shit was really hitting the fan. So you can see here we we got this gap here between 20 the open here, 29.65, call it 29.05 ish. Um, I think we could probably go see see that gap filled. The area, the other area of interest, so call it 2900 and we close, you know, right on the highs on Friday, um, 2870-ish, 75. Um, so I'd call it 2900 to 2950. Let's just, let's just call it a bigger range. You know, ball is still kind of, VIX is still somewhere around high 30s. So, you know, we're getting, yeah. Uh, We're getting these types of bigger swings um, still, even in even as vol is coming up. So th this will be an area right in here that we're going to try to sell first time. Um, you know, I don't see this getting much above that 29.76. You know, I, I would think that we can get some sort of a retracement um, back down. So let's let's say we're <clears throat> Let's say we're in a short-term, you know, bullish environment, which it kind of feels like. And let's say, let's say we get up to this two-thirds, which brings us up here. And we'd be looking for a one-third retracement. So one-third retracement of the move from the lows. And let's, you know, this is assuming that we have, that we do reach this two-thirds fib. A one-third retracement gets us all the way back down to 26.58. So... It's kind of how I'm envisioning it. So one push up and then a tradable move lower, um, you know, 200, three, almost 300 S&P points back down. So that's something that's on the radar for this week. Um, you know, people are calling. I mean, the banks have thrown in the towel and basically said, you know, stocks are going to go back and test the highs. We're not going to go back and test that, you know, the low is in for the year. We kind of think that the low, you know, potentially could be in for the next few months, you know, through summer. Get into kind of that September, October time when vol tends to, seasonally tends to uh, to pick up a bit. You know, we've had some some major corrections in, in fall. Um, you know, over the years. So that's kind of how I'm trying to, you know, psychologically, like, like get myself mentally prepared. Um, and, you know, maybe not a retest of the lows or new lows until Q3. Um, when I'm really go bonds are essentially fixed. I mean, nothing's really going on there. Tens and thirties. I mean, the, the Fed is. I would imagine you know that they. It feels almost like they're. They're already starting yield curve control. Um, you know, and what will happen is volatility will come out of that asset class, fixed income, and it'll shift into things like metals like precious metals and you know i think equity vol can stay somewhat elevated um 
you know, for a while. And, and even FX, you know, even that, you know, I think more people will be trading foreign exchange, uh, even if fixed income, even if they're capping yields and fixed income. So, you know, these are, are much bigger, longer term, medium to longer term um, ideas and thought processes. But, you know, we, 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 we try to write a, you know, at least get a, a, a rough draft of a, of a script you know, looking out a couple months and then, you know, we really dialed into more of the, for me personally, more of the intra week moves and my colleagues are, are a bit shorter term than that, but, you know, we do play the tactical book and then we've got, um, you know, the slightly longer term, um, time horizon that we, that we trade as well. So again, S and P's are opening up. It looks like that this is a delayed quote. Um, I don't have my Bloomberg up, but I, I think it's it's somewhere around 28.50. So we're a little bit lower. Again, the news flow of the weekend was nothing really, um, kind of as expected. And uh, you know, I was looking at the IG index weekend Wall Street on Saturday, and again this morning, and um, it you know it was showing that we'd have a quiet quite open, get, you know, up or down less than 1% on the open. Um, gold is kind of interesting. So we're not going to really talk about fixed like bonds because there's not much to talk about there. I'll let my colleagues, you know, they can talk about buns and gilts and BTPs. Um, here is the, this is the CFD, but if I put in the GC, to GC, hold on, let me get to it. So this is a weekly gold. You can see we went out, we 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 broke out of those, <coughs> broke those old highs. You know, we had a real strong close a couple of weeks ago in gold. Went up. Where did we close? Seventeen fifty. Went up to. 17.887, and then we reverse lower. Uh, it's under a little bit of pressure here on the open in Asia. Um, and I am I am recording this video a couple hours after the uh, the U.S. futures markets reopened. So you can see it's you know it was down three days in a row, kind of had uh, you know big long wick up here, and then and then trade lower. Then we had this uh, bearish engulfing type day on. Uh, Thursday that was, and a big down day on Friday. So, you know, we're now getting back to some levels of some old highs. You can see these tops here. Um, so the 1690 area is, is kind of important. Um, you know, I think if we can get under, if we start trading below, say this, this low here at 1670, um, you know, maybe it retraces more. So why don't we run, why don't we run the fibs here of a daily. Um, this is the next contract out. So I'm not even sure if this is the right one, but let me go back to gold. Let me go back to this one. Cause this will be the front month. Um, I'll take that low there. You know, and, and, and gold is acting as a, uh, it's kind of, the dollar goes up, gold goes down. Um, it's not really trading risk on, risk off so much. Although, I guess you could argue that it's you know it is trading lower here with with uh, S and P is lower. But the big move that we saw, this is the big capitulation. You know this this move from 1680, and you know we had over well over a week of just capitulative type um, deleveraging moves. And that was when risk parity got hammered. So they were selling stocks and bonds and they were selling gold, um, you know, pretty much threw everything out. And, you know, now we're in more of a, you know, the, the, the rally back up has been on the back of all the um, unprecedented Fed and, you know, Fed stimulus and the, um, you know, 
the fiscal stimulus, the helicopter money that they've sent out. We actually we actually got our checks last week on Wednesday, which was I was very surprised. Um, but uh, you know they're giving they're giving money away. It's not a lot of money, but it's better than nothing. So anyhow, so let's say if if gold continues to trade heavy, and it's kind of kind of holds right around here. Um, I don't really want to see it below the sixteen sixty. Um, if it does, then we've got the retracements down sixteen thirty seven, sixteen hundred. Um, and I, I don't know what would drive this. It's probably short term positioning's probably pretty long again. And so they, you know, we could see, a, we could definitely see a bit of a correction in silver. Um, this holding up better than gold, uh, the gold silver ratio. A lot of people are watching that. Uh, copper is kind of following equities off the lows. You know, if you overlay that with the equity chart, um, which makes a lot of sense. And here's VIX closed under 40 on Friday. Um, you know, things have definitely are a lot quieter. The, the um, daily range is like, let's even take it. We can take a look at the ATR. Here's the ATR. And, uh, you know, when we were down near the lows in S&Ps, it was, a, you know, almost a 200 handle um, ATR. And it seems to be coming off. It's about 130 handles now. And this should actually continue to come down. Um, so I'm not... Uh, it's definitely it's definitely quieter. I mean, the, with all the global stimulus that has been added, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, let's go to currencies. Dollar max, no clue. Always seems to rally in Asia, but this chart is not worth commenting on. Um, you know, for me, I've had this alert set 2283 for ages if you do see more risk on you know potentially the dollar box could could turn over roll over a bit and retrace some of this parabolic move that we've seen um dollar yen traded um you know traded kind of heavy early in the week and then stabilized uh this looks like a pretty good level of support here i, don't, I didn't have a line drawn um, I've got on my other charting package, but 106.90, we'll call it. One, two, three, four daily lows. Um, if we start seeing dollar weakness, dollar yen could be a good one to play. I would like to see some equity weakness at the same time. Um, I don't really see myself selling low dollar yen unless equities are really rolling over um urian is uh here might look a little bit more interesting same type of thing though i mean it's got you know it's got these lows down here kind of on the 116 handle um here's one euro swiss i was reading i think it was on thursday wednesday or thursday of last week there were some very large options trades expressing lower euro swiss which is you know a difficult trade for me because the smb seems to be smoothing this decline but i did read about um very large volume of smp puts so you know puts are looking for lower prices and i believe the strikes were 103 so about 200 points lower and then parity um, I'm not really sure how we would get there. The narrative would have to change quite dramatically from risk on to risk off, or it could be, you know, could have something to do with, you know, just European, you know, like another European crisis, which I would never rule out, you know, given the, given the backdrop. Um, Let's go down, look at some more currencies. Let's see, cable, uh, not doing a whole lot. 
you know, had that up move and then kind of starting to run out of some steam. But again, you can see, you know, down here is this ATR. So you can see where we had, you know, 260 point average true range. And, you know, it's only about 160 now. So you can see how things are, you know, vol is kind of being taken out across all asset classes, really. Um, you know, cable for me, I don't have much. Um, we were looking at these fibs on Friday, I believe. So if we take that high down to the low, which was at 115 area, you can see we were, <laughs> we were traced more than two thirds and then it's kind of stalled. Um, you know, but I, I guess I could see it get it back up to some of these old lows, 127.35 up to 129 even. Um, somewhere in that range. Dollar CAD hasn't been doing a whole lot. Oil, you know, continues to weaken. Um, it's down a little bit on the open again here in uh, in Asia. But Dollar CAD to me just kind of looks like a mess. You know, you'll have like the one big up bar, then it retraces half that move, and then it, it does seem to be tracking oil a bit. Um, Euro. Not really any interest. Was trying to be trying to play it from the long side. It was working, and I stopped out as on this daily bar. This is an ugly bar, so I stopped out of this other close, and I was back on uh, Wednesday, I think. <clears throat> Let's take a look at Euro Sterling. Nothing. Uh, we looked at Euro Swiss. How about Aussie dollar? Aussie dollar is under a little bit of pressure. You know, it's still early. It's an inside day. Um, we had this big down day. There was a big, big dollar buy program that went through on, um, on Wednesday. So you saw the Euro and you saw cable lower, Kiwi and Aussie and dollar cat higher. Um, <clears throat> short term, I don't really have a strong view on any of these dollar pairs, you know, a bit more medium term. We do think, um, with all this stimulus that we've seen, uh, surely things like gold and metals, should do well, and um, they're not going to let the dollar rally. They don't want to see the dollar index through those highs of 103. Um, you know, that it basically defeats the whole purpose of the stimulus. You know, they are trying to reflate the global economy. The only way to reflate the global economy is you need to have a weaker dollar. So they will not allow that to happen. And we've talked about this ad nauseum. If the dollar index Let's pull it up here. DXY. If the dollar index breaks this high, call it 103. It's probably going to go to 105 in a heartbeat. 107 even. Um, here's an old high that I had way back, I think on a monthly. If we start getting above those levels, you are going to hear a lot of chatter out of, you know, Trump and the U.S. and pretty much anyone, emerging market um, players, about not wanting a strong dollar now. That's going to, you know, absolutely destroy the emerging market complex. So, um, you know, and that's that's when you get that's when you get to uh, you know a Plaza Accord 2.0 um, by seeing dollar index up, you know, 10 percent through those eyes. That would be an absolute disaster for. For the global economy. Um, so that pretty much covers it, I think. Uh, take a quick look at Kiwi while we're here. Nothing much. You know, it just seems to be vol is, is coming off a bit. You know, the currency vol is coming down a bit. So now it's, you know, it feels like the market is just kind of a rangy and you're selling, it's more of a mean reverting type narrative where you're selling high ones and buying low ones. Um, economic data or data does not really matter at all. So we're not even paying attention to that. And we do have quite a lot of economic data. We do have uh, you know, a lot of earnings data out of the U.S. Uh, this week, th these next couple of weeks. So that could at least short term drive uh, equity prices. So I'll leave it at that. We're getting close to 20 minutes. It's getting long. Um, you'll hear from us on the European Open, and good luck trading this week, and I'll speak to you next week. All the best. Cheers.